It's taken nearly 20 years, but at last, Panama's former military strongman and human rights advocates are both getting what they want, the return of General Manuel Antonio Noriega to his homeland. The 77-year-old is a shadow of his former self, of a time when he made his foes tremble. For more than a decade, the former intelligence chief was the de facto ruler of Panama, a country whose interoceanic canal has always given it strategic importance. Noriega was often accused of eliminating challengers by rigging elections and ordering assassinations. But for years, General Noriega was regarded as a valuable intelligence asset by the CIA and the U.S. State Department. In the 1980s, he helped funnel illegal American arms shipments to rebels trying to overthrow Nicaragua's leftist government. But he was also prone to acting as a double agent, working for Cuban interests in the region. When this and his alleged close ties to drug trafficking came to light in 1987, the United States turned its back on him. In 1998, a U.S. Senate investigation concluded that the CIA and other government agencies had turned a blind eye to his corruption and drug dealings, even as he was emerging as a key player in Colombia's Medellin cartel. Noriega had become an embarrassment for the U.S. administration. So, it decided to use an alleged attack against several U.S. citizens in Panama as a pretext to go in and get him out. As president, I have no higher obligation than to safeguard the lives of American citizens. And that is why I directed our armed forces to protect the lives of American citizens in Panama and to bring General Noriega to justice in the United States. In what was at the time the biggest U.S. military operation since the Vietnam War, more than 20,000 U.S. troops invaded Panama. While U.S. troops hunted for him house to house, Noriega sought refuge at the Vatican Embassy. But eventually he was worn down by a week-long siege that included unbearably loud heavy metal music blasted by the U.S. military towards the embassy. Noriega surrendered and was unceremoniously flown to the United States to be tried and convicted for drug trafficking. After completing his prison sentence in 2007, he fought for the right to return to Panama, where he has been convicted of at least six murders in absentia and faces numerous other charges. But instead, the United States put him on a plane again, this time to France, where he was wanted for lesser charges of money laundering. By now, Noriega had suffered numerous strokes. He was frail, but he never gave up the hope of returning to the country where he once ruled supreme. Now, his wish has come true. And so, too, that of scores of Panamanians who've been waiting for his return to see him face justice. Lucia Newman, Al Jazeera.